Alrighty y'all, this is Connor Wardle here, back with another Calibrid Care video. Uh, we're kind of getting back into the uh, Mass Scopus uh, videos. I guess I haven't really done one of those yet, um, but this will be uh, kind of the uh, the next couple of videos will be uh, primarily on Mass Scopus uh, subspecies that I keep. Uh, this guy right here, this is a red racer, uh, Mass Scopus Pisces. Um, one of the uh, more common and widespread uh, Mass Scopus species, um, along with like Western Coach Whips and stuff like that. Um, these guys have a very uh, wide um, native range. And uh, yeah, so these guys, uh, they can be found in Southern California, which is where this guy's from. Uh, Arizona, he's about to bite me, but that's okay. Uh, Arizona, and um, they kind of go up into uh, Nevada a bit too. Sorry, I'm getting a little nervous. He's, this guy uh, tends to have a little bit of a, a stronger bite compared to uh, other coaches that I've dealt with before. Um, yeah, so uh, anyway, let's get back to it. So uh, we talked about their native range. Uh, they tend to inhabit kind of uh, like a rocky or desert uh, scrubland uh, type habitat. So uh, kind of similar to the striped whip snake uh, with their um, kind of uh, more scrubland type habitat uh, that they... Uh, live in, but these guys are found farther south uh, than the striped whip snake. Uh, they're going to be found in more arid, I guess, more desert uh, environments. Not that whip snakes aren't found in desert environments, but um, just a little bit drier conditions. Uh, these guys can often be ta uh, be flipped uh, throughout the day, um, just underneath uh, large flat rocks or any art other artificial cover out there. Um, you, you can also find these guys out on the crawl uh, quite often if you do see them out in the in the field on the crawl, uh, chances are pretty slim that you're going to be able to uh, get hands on uh, this animal. Um, these guys, uh, they're really fast, um, just similar to other Mascopa species, uh, pretty quick animals, um, and pretty much your best bet to uh, collect one of these guys would be flipping it. Um, yeah, so let's get into diet in the wild. So similar to... Um, other species of Mascophus, these guys are going to pretty much eat anything that they can overpower. Um, he's going to try and eat me throughout this video, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so these guys will eat birds, uh, rodent eggs. Uh, well, sorry, not rodent eggs, sorry. Uh, birds, bird eggs, uh, small rodents, uh, lizards, uh, oftentimes other snakes as well. Uh, they've been known to eat other snakes, uh, which I think is kind of neat. Um, yeah, uh, similar to whip snakes, which I guess I haven't made one of the vid their videos yet, uh, but similar to uh, the other Mastacopa species, these guys are going to have that nice big eye. I kind of think of these guys as kind of the more raptor-like um, examples of uh, colubrids, just because they got those giant eyes, and what they'll do is they'll sit out um, either just on the ground and periscope, or they'll kind of uh, sit out on some, some type of shrub or rock or something, some elevated surface where they can uh, just look with those big eyes and uh, look for a lizard, frog, or whatever. Um, and as soon as they see it, uh, the animal's pretty much dead because these guys are, they're quick enough. Um, they're called uh, whip snakes and cash whips for a reason, or uh, I guess in this guy's case, a red racer, um, just because uh, they are quite fast um, and tend, uh, tend to, uh, yeah, just get on top of what they're what they're looking out out for uh, food wise. Uh, as far as captive uh, feeding, uh, this guy is well. I haven't had this guy uh, super long uh, yet. He's still adjusting to captivity. Um, I have kept these guys in the past. Um, I find that they do just fine on hopper mice. Um, sometimes there is a little bit of lizard scenting that's required, um, but nothing nothing too major um, with these guys. Uh, just some uh, little spiny lizard. Uh, you can rub a spiny lizard all over a rodent uh, or even skin a spiny lizard, frozen thawed spiny lizard, um, and wrap that around a uh, hopper or something like that. Uh, but typically, just a hopper or um, some type of small button quail is enough to get these guys going. They like that motion. Um, like I said, being coach whips and whipsnakes are looking for motion with their prey. Uh, they're going to be hopping around. Um, and yeah, I, I haven't had success yet. Uh, getting any of any of the uh, examples that I've kept on frozen thawed. Um, so that is something that you need to uh, kind of think about. I'm sure uh, they will take them. Um, I just haven't had uh, luck with that uh, in my experience. As far as caging goes, um, these guys are uh, more active than your typical colubrids. Um, so I'd recommend uh, housing them uh, not on a rack setup, 
but in a more uh, kind of glass display tank setup if you can. Uh, there we go. There's that bite right there. Uh, sorry, um, but yeah, so I've got this guy in a 40 gallon long tank right now. Uh, I've got some uh, some hides for him just on aspen bedding. Aspen works fine for these guys. Uh, nothing nothing too crazy. As far as temps go, um, I've got this guy set to 82 just like the rest of my colubrids. Um, he met, um, yeah, just, just 82. I don't know what, what I was kind of getting off on. Uh, anyway, so yeah, 82 degrees. Um, it's fine for these guys right here. As far as uh, humidity goes, nothing super special. Um, I mean, if you wanted to, uh, if, your, if your animal did uh, produce some kind of patchier sheds, uh, then I would recommend adding a humid hide box, which uh, isn't super difficult to make. I think I've talked about it in other videos, but just, uh, just some Tupperware, uh, just a little Tupperware box full of uh, some damp sphagnum moss. You don't want to use the dyed sphagnum. Uh, some kind of art stores will have dyed moss. You don't want to use that. Um, but just some uh, sphagnum that you can pick up in bulk from like a Home Depot or Lowe's that works just fine. Uh, you just keep that moist uh, and keep the lid on the uh, the uh, Tupperware container there and that will contain uh, the humidity there um, and provide uh, some good quality sheds if you do live in a drier environment. Yeah, um, so I guess moving into other notes for this species that I have. Um, as, as you guys have seen, this guy's a little bit more nervous. Um, again, he was, he is a wild caught animal, um, all of pretty much exclusively, well, all of the, uh, if I can get my words together, sorry, um, pretty much all of the, uh, red racers in captivity, um, that I know of, uh, are wild caught animals. Uh, there's very little captive breeding going, um, in general with any of the mascophus or colubra species, um, just because, uh, not a lot of people want to work with them because they tend to be higher, higher strong animals, a little bit more defensive, um, a little more nippier and muskier than uh, other people want to deal with. Uh, and uh, just they're kind of, they're a little bit pickier, um, which is oftentimes where you have to scent, scent uh, rodents. But, um, but yeah, I'm willing to put in the work and I'm hoping to uh, get a few more animals um, from the, the source that I have um, and one day produce uh, captive bred animals. Uh, they will do a little bit better in captivity, possibly, hopefully be a little bit less high strung. Um, and just be solid feeders um, for those of you that are interested in these guys. Um, this is a young female here, so uh, she's still got some still got some growing to do. Um, as adults, um, these guys typically top out around uh, five foot mark. Um, there are some larger examples, um, but I would feel comfortable breeding this girl whenever she gets to the five foot mark. Uh, right now, she's closer. Uh, she's approaching the four foot mark, so she's still got some growing to do. Um, probably be a, a, a year or two before I uh, attempt to pair her with any uh, any males. Um, but yeah, that is in the cards. Hopefully, uh, I can produce these guys and uh, provide more quality animals for you guys. Um, yeah, so I guess uh, that kind of brings us to the end of the video here. Or I guess one more thing. Uh, I wouldn't recommend these guys uh, as beginner snakes at all. Uh, these do require a little bit, uh, well, they, they can be a little bit more finicky than other, uh, other species, especially uh, other Mesoscopus species. Uh, Western coach whoops are going to be a lot more, uh, or, or a lot less less picky uh, in my experience. Um, so if you guys do eventually want to keep a species like this, I would recommend starting with um, with a, uh, a Western coach whip or similar species. Uh, even if you wanted to get like a black racer, those are a little bit more um, available in the hobby, uh, but they have similar... Um, I guess, pickiness, I guess. Um, so that way, uh, Black Racer or something like that, you could start off with um, figure out how to get the scenting game going uh, and then maybe transition over to something like this. Uh, yeah. Um, I enjoy working with this girl here. Um, like I said, she's more of a display species, not really a Hannibal species, uh, which is why she's kind of been freaking out on me a little bit in this video, just kind of uh, being a little bit more wary of me. Um, but overall, I enjoy keeping the species excellent display species um, and just something that I hope to uh, provide for y'all in the future. Hope you guys enjoy this video and uh, I'll have another video for y'all on Friday. Awesome.